Thank you, Chris. Uh, and again, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome again to our second annual Canadian Internet Forum. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I'm very happy to be here because uh, we've got a great lineup of speakers today, and I'm looking forward to some of the lively discussions with you as well throughout today. For those of you that might not know, CIR is the organization that manages the .ca domain name registry and its supporting infrastructure. In essence, CIR, CIR, CIR makes .ca work, and it's something I'm proud to say we've been doing for 11 years. We are primarily a technical organization, but we are also heavily involved in internet policy development, both globally by participating at a number of forums on the global stage, and domestically, where we develop and implement policies that support Canada's internet community. This is the second ever CIF, which we are holding after the roaring success of last year's event. The 2011 CIF last year invited Canadians to explore and discuss the links between the digital economy and the digital literacy and the internet. We held regional consultations in communities across Canada, and we also facilitated an online discussion about internet-related issues of interest to Canadians. Those consultations wrapped up with a national event that was held here in Ottawa and webcast across the country in February of last year. Those results of that 2011 CIF were recently presented at the United Nations Glo Coordinated Internet Global Forum, the IGF, in, held recently in Nairobi, Kenya. And I can honestly tell you that last year's CIF extended, exceeded sorry, all of our expectations. And for that reason I'm, very, reason, I'm very excited to be here today. We started the CIF consultations this year with a survey about what Canadians felt was the key challenge facing, internet-related challenge facing Canadians. And what was the top challenge identified by Canadians? Security. And as an engineer who works at the heart of internet security, this comes as no surprise to me. The fact is, we're moving more and more of our lives online. And unfortunately, there are people who would like to take advantage of that fact in a criminal manner. The potential to fall victim to crime is, in fact, on the rise. According to a report from Norton, cybercrime cost Canadians $5.5 billion in 2010, and that's a tremendous amount of money. And though it's difficult to tell, we estimate that more than 80% of email moving through the internet today is spam, and almost half of computers connected to the internet in Canada are infected with some kind of malware. Many think that cybercrime is something that won't happen to them, but it's simply not true. Criminals are increasingly going after the little guy, as they believe it is unlikely that they will get caught with the fraud involving small amounts of money uh, from average Canadians. Law enforcement, which dedicate now a significant amount of resources to cybercrime, are struggling to keep up. We're inundated now daily by so many scams through email, social networking, and websites that it's starting to shatter our confidence and our trust in the system. How many people have gotten an email telling you that you need to reset your banking password? I got one just last week, actually, told me that my, uh, there was some suspicious transactions. Could I log in, click here to log in uh, to check my transactions? And could I call a phone number that wasn't anywhere on my bank to, uh, to uh, verify? And it was actually legit. But of course, I didn't trust it, and I didn't find out until I went to dinner last next night, and my credit card didn't go. So it's that kind of trust that's making governments increasingly feel the need to act. We're seeing it with legislation like the recently introduced Bill C-30, or the soon-to-be-implemented anti-spam legislation. We saw it with any number of proposed national laws around the world. And at the international level, we are seeing it play out at a number of tables. How can we better combat crime online? The fact is the criminals are using better, more sophisticated tools, but at this point we're bringing nothing more than sticks and knives to the fight. The government has rightfully identified that some, for some time that the tools that we have today are out of date. However, as we can see from the response from the recently introduced Bill C-30, finding the right balance is no trivial task. We need to find a way to fight online crime respects and respect the rights and freedoms that we've enjoyed online for several decades now, but while ensuring our confidence in the system is not entirely lost. Now, I have many views on the uh, subject, but I'm going to keep them to myself now because I believe for us to find that balance, we need to, throughout today, have an open and broad-based dialogue with the internet community that is gathered here today, like those who have gathered and also through the webcast. We are the people who confront these issues every day either as engineers, internet users, or policymakers. Cybercrime affects all of us, and we need to be part of the solution. 
That's why I believe this Canadian Internet Forum is so important. It's truly a unique event in the history of Canada. And as we are all aware, the Internet has become an integral part of the economic, political, and social lives of all Canadians. It's everywhere. The Internet has become part of the social and economic fabric of this nation. With the CIF, CIRA is providing a space for Canadians to discuss the future of the Internet in Canada. Internet forums like the CIF are held around the world, some representing a particular geographic regions, or other like, others like the CIF are national. This past year has been an interesting one for the Internet. We witnessed the incredible power of the Internet has to offer through events like the Arab Spring, and we also witnessed how the power can potentially be taken away with legislation such as SOPA, but also how the Internet can unite to send a message, as we saw. The Internet is a powerful entity, and I'm proud of CIRA for providing a venue for Canadians to have their say about its future. A little bit of this time, I just take a little moment to recognize all the CIRA members who have uh, joined us today, either in the room or through the webcast. CIRA is a member-driven organization, and it's more than 50,000 CIRA members are the, the, what drive us to do the work that we do every day.